Sean Daniel with Guitar Control here. Today we're going to talk about using some really, really simple ways to start being able to solo in absolutely any key. It all comes down to chord tones. We're just going to do a root note and its third. So we're going to learn a little bit about the chords in the key of G, where to find them in maybe different locations than you're used to, and make sure you click the link below because I'm, tab I'm going to tap everything out. So let's get started, right? What I was just playing was a chord progression in the key of G, the people's key, right? So the chords were G major. E minor to D. Okay, so those are three chords in the key of G, right? That would be a one, six, five progression. Chords are based off the first note in the key of G, which is a G, which has to become a G major chord. The sixth note, which is an E, which is an E minor chord, and the fifth note, which is a D major chord. Okay, so that's all good and fun, but I think using chord tones is a great way to always be able to see the intervals and what might be available to you if you're playing maybe lead over something like that, or just maybe trying to kind of find out new different ways to play chord voicings all over the neck, okay? So what I mean by that, there are seven notes in the key of G. Each one of those notes can become a chord. Now, what we wanna do here is find out where those notes are across one string. So we're gonna use the E string as an example. This is a great way to also maybe start memorizing some of the names of the notes on your fretboard if you haven't really gotten around to that. Now is the time, all right? So, first note in the key of G is G. Third fret, now, low E string, high E string, doesn't matter. I'm gonna demonstrate this on the low E string, but we're gonna bring this to the high E string for the actual exercise part of this, right? So the first note is a G. A whole step away, two frets higher, is an A. Another whole step from that is a B. It's the third note, G, A, B, in the key of D. A half step. Is a C, a whole step from there, is a D, a whole step from there, is a E, a whole step from there, is an F sharp, the seventh note in the key of G, and then we're back at G, okay? So if we go by the frets, it's three, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. The exact same notes can be found in the high E string. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, all right? So if we were gonna turn these into chords, we would just have to add other notes to make a triad, a three note chord, to make like a G major, or an A minor, or a B minor, or a C major, or a D major, or an E minor, or like a F sharp minor seven flat five, back to G. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna simplify it. We're just gonna take two notes of those chords. And the great thing is, out of all the scale degrees, as they're called, any of those notes are either one or the other from the shapes that we're gonna learn. So real quick, bear with me. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the G on the high E string, and then your middle finger is going to grab the fourth fret on the G string. So we have three E and four G. You can play them together. You can play them one at a time. Now these are mo these are two out of three chords needed for a G major chord. We have the root note and what it's what's called its major third. All right. The only thing we're missing is what's called the fifth the first, third, and fifth notes of a key make up a chord. So a G, a B, and a D. But that third note is really important because that's what makes a G chord a major chord as compared to a minor chord, right? We have the major third of G and then the root note for G. So this is kind of representative of that G major, the first chord in that key. What sounds really cool on these is if you slide into them. So right there, I just took the second fret of the G string, slid to the fourth fret, and then ended up on that G note, on the high E string, right? Really sounds great when you kind of slide around uh, with this interval, this space between these two notes. Now the next chord in that key, remember, is the fifth fret, the A chord, which is a minor chord. Now the great thing about how this exercise works, how this visual works, is remember we had three E and four G for the major chord. For the minor chord, we have five and five. They're actually on the same fret, okay? So this is a, a root note A, and it's minor third because A is a minor chord in the key of G. The second, third, and sixth notes in any key end up being minor chords, all right? So we can take this G chord to an 
A minor chord, just like that. 4G, 3E, 5G, 5E. The great thing is, is all, all the chords in this key are either this shape or this shape, depending on where you root the notes. We're gonna go through all of them, right? The one chord. This is the two chord. The three chord, like I said, was minor. Do you remember which fret it was on, what the next chord is? It's a B, the seventh fret. So we go from five to seven. next one is a C major, so remember when we memorized the names and the locations, three, five, seven, eight is where that C is, so we slide into the major shape for that where it run. Now your fingers are just one fret apart, eight E and nine G, just like it was with the G. So visually, I'm thinking of the high E string as being my root note. I can start with this G, if I want to slide up to the C, I'm thinking of the eighth fret, and I gotta get my pointer finger to that eighth fret. And when I think of that, that automatically slides my middle finger to the ninth fret, okay? Because I'm just keeping the shape intact. Now I can skip those minor chords in between. I can hit all of them. There's the G major, A minor, B, C. The next one is the same thing, just two frets higher. Notice that, what's the 10th fret on the high E string? You ask, I know you know it because you memorized these already. It's 10th fret, it's a D, D major chord. The next one is gonna be the 12th fret, minor, E minor, and then we can actually go right to the next octave G from here, which again, there are only 12 frets in music, so if you ever add 12 to a lower fret, then you get the, the same note a pitch higher, so. Three is a G, right? Three plus 12 is 15. So if we go all the way to 15, we end up at the next G. But what did I do there? I skipped the seventh chord of the key of G. I skipped that F sharp. Don't do that. Well, you can do that. It's up to you. It is uh, not technically a minor chord or a major chord. This ends up being a diminished chord. But as far as the root note and its third are concerned, it acts like a minor chord. So we can think of this as maybe like another minor chord ish thing in this key. I'm just on the 14th fret of the E string and the 14th fret of the G string. So all of these root notes have either one of two shapes, the major shape or the minor shape. G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp, which is actually diminished, but it, we can call it a minor third for the purposes of this, back to G major. So anytime you have, uh, you know, some kind of backing track that you know what the key is in, you can really just kind of play over that and then jump around here. Again, this is just a G major chord progression. maybe in a compositional capacity, if you're just doing some kind of solo guitar arrangement. Another way that you can use this is to bridge the gap in between chords, if maybe you're just playing something even acoustically, something by yourself. Like let's say you're playing like a G chord. And you wanna to go to a D chord. G to D is a super common way to do something, right? These are just open chord voicings, doing it this way. If you can get bar chords down, a really cool thing to do is take the third fret rooted major bar chord all the way to the 10th fret. And then now you can start seeing these as ways to walk to them, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a G major chord, we're gonna run it to the 10th fret, same position, which is a D major chord. And then we pick up some of these minor things along the way, right? This is representative of kind of like a, you know, not as full of a sound, 
That's why it's great for lead playing because it can really cut through if you're playing in a context with like a lot of other maybe instruments, maybe other guitar players even. If they're playing like G to A minor to B minor, you can play a and it'll sound, you know, it'll stick out a little bit more. But like I said, if we're going from here to here, you can just use it as like a transition. Just a couple different ideas of a lot of things that you can do and I think it's super useful especially just to kind of see the major scale along one string and then be able to know the names of those notes so you can start using a little bit more of your chord vocabulary and incorporate that into your playing because even you know a lot of people don't think that the lead playing or soloing incorporates chords at all it's more like a scale thing which to a certain extent that is somewhat true but it's really just how you perceive it in your mind when I'm soloing, I always think of chord tones first. So it's a combination of chord voicings, arpeggios, and scales, which we talk a lot about on the guitar control channel here, right? So hopefully that kind of clears some stuff up for you. It's really just a fun exercise that you can practice. It's not really too hard, especially if you're doing it, you know, finger style. You can just kind of like chill on the G and high E strings and then just rock it out. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. If you want to see more stuff like this or have any suggestions of what else you want to see, song requests, whatever, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to check out the other videos on the Guitar Control channel about myself, other great instructors, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.